I have the chip in my head that says, do not predict the end of the Alabama dynasty. Do not say the Alabama dynasty is done. And I don't think the Alabama dynasty is done. But I can say this is a red flag. Because if, if Tommy Reese, who is the new offensive coordinator at Alabama, he came from Notre Dame. If he had come and then gotten Tyler Buckner, who was going to be his starter at Notre Dame, or, you know, was a situation where Buckner was coming off the injury, which he was injured most of last year, and but he played in the Gator Bowl. But if, if Reese had left Notre Dame right, you know, right after the season, gone to Alabama and grabbed Tyler Buckner in the in the previous window, I'm like, oh, that's his ace in the hole. That was his opening day starter in 2022, and he was hurt, but now he's back. Except we just watched Tommy Reese recruit over Tyler Buckner three months ago to take Sam Hartman. That does not give me confidence. I had a conversation with a, a staffer at an, SEC, at an SEC school back in August, and we were talking about the portal and about how far out they advance scout and really think about this stuff. Um, and they mentioned back in August, Alabama's taking a transfer quarterback this offseason, right? Like they they just like were looking at it and they're like, hmm, it seems like it probably, and trying to kind of forecast how this stuff was going to go. And I guess you kind of have to ask, like, why didn't they in December, right? Like, if if you're going to – I mean, I, I know there's, like, an order of operations to this, obviously. But I, I'm assuming – And the timing they, of the OC yeah. hire matters to that. Yeah. But, like, I don't I'm know. If they you're went into this decision in April, like, should you have taken one in December? Yeah. Well, but you couldn't take one in December because it took that long for Bill O'Brien to be gone because – didn't didn't the Patriots OC job have to open? It's funny because everybody knew he was going to be the Patriots OC, yep. but didn't it? That job didn't open until the end of the NFL regular season, and then Alabama had to, unlike other years, and I I actually wrote about this too. You know, Georgia had Mike Bobo waiting in the wings, much like Nick Saban always had some ridiculously overqualified person waiting in the wings when when a job opened up, and. You know, Kevin Steele qualifies that, the new Alabama defensive coordinator. He's worked with Nick Saban on multiple occasions before. But for the OC, they went they went outside. You know, they talked to to some different people. They talked to to Washington's OC. Uh, and then they, they go talk to Tommy Rees. And so they, they were bringing in somebody from outside the family. And, yeah, all that stuff was done. All the quarterbacks who were going to move had moved at that point. Now, I, I think they take Eli Well, it's Holmes funny that he brought that up because I was having daydreams of, like, Alabama starting quarterback DJ. Uwe Angolay? Yeah. Like, is that – like, can you just, like, fathom that? Ah, it's just, I was just he daydreaming He would have been available. He would have been available. Who it's else podcast, would have been it? You know? Who, who else would have been available? Devin Leary, Sam Hartman. Devin Leary, Sa Devin right? Hartman. Exactly. Yeah. Why do you? Why do you not get Sam Hartman then? Now, it makes you believe the Drake. Not maybe not the the dollar figure on the Drake May rumors, but Drake May was once committed to Alabama. Yeah. Like it would it would have made sense to at least reach out to somebody. And be like, y you think maybe? I mean, guys, a week a week ago, this was not a secret. They were making a run at Tyler Van Dyke. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Which that's not Drake May, and that's not Sam Hartman. Like neither Tyler Van Dyke nor Tyler Buckner nor any other quarterback that I can think of named Tyler at the moment. Tyler Palco, probably not either. But I, I just don't see that being necessarily a huge upgrade over what you've got. But let's let's hear Nick Saban because he he was on with Reese Davis. He was at the draft to to see Will Anderson and to see Bryce Young get picked. So let's let's hear Nick Saban with Reese Davis. Both those guys leaving big shoes to fill for sure, particularly Bryce. And the news came today that you got a quarterback out of the transfer portal and Tyler Buckner from Notre Dame. What went into that decision and what do you think his opportunity is? Well, we wanted to give our quarterbacks in our program every opportunity to win the job uh, in you know, the spring practice. And, you know, we felt like we needed to add some competition in the room. And, yeah, you know, Tyler was certainly a guy that, you know, was going to be the starter last year at Notre Dame, got injured, played in the ball game, played very well. So we thought he would add a lot of competition. And, and we think he's got the right kind of character and attitude to be a, a positive influence on our team. So the unspoken piece of that is after he says, 
we wanted to give everybody on our roster a chance to win the job in the spring, but nobody won it. They had their chance. Yeah. So it is a strange situation because they did this to everyone. They raised the level of play so much that you had to have a much better quarterback than you used to have to have in the SEC. I mean, Stetson Bennett was a was a very good quarterback, but he also was surrounded by all that Georgia talent. But you know, he's probably going to be an NFL quarterback. I kind of think you have to have one to win the SEC now. Okay, here's a question: Could Garrett Nussmeyer walk into and he can't because the SEC rules? But could Derek, Garrett Nussmeyer walk in and win the Alabama job against all those other guys? That, but that's the thing. Like, what are we supposed to think? Uh, it, it probably leads to too much jumping at conclusions here. But like, Joe, what are we supposed uh, to uh, think well, of Bill Rowan? Let's, Rowan's play, let's play the game. Let's play the game. Carson Beck, Brock Vandegrift, Gunnar Stockton, mm-hmm. or the Alabama QB room. Well, you take the Georgia one. Okay, Jane uh, Daniels and Garrett Nussmeyer, or the Alabama QB room. I guess you take the. What do you guys think? You think the, sure, I, wait, 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 wait. Well, the thing that's so hard about this is that, like, I would, if you would have asked me that question a month ago, I would have laughed in your face. So, like, now it's like kind of like, what am because I? The most? Alabama but I'm not sitting here thinking time. the Bama yeah. room's a bunch of busts at this point. Either. That's what I'm yeah, saying. Like, I, I think I would take no. the Alabama. But I think room. there's, I think they're saying that. Or, well, they're not saying about a whole scene of Lonergan. They're saying it about Milro and Simpson, though. Mm-hmm. That's not us saying that. That is them them taking Tyler Buckner. How else are we supposed to interpret that? I think I think we're supposed to take it as they don't feel like Jill and Milrow is where they need him to be. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I think that's right. So as Lester Lee just pointed out, Joe Milton and Nico Iyama Mayalava were the Alabama QB room. Which, which, you get, which one you got? Milton. This is this is getting very interesting, is what mm-hmm. I'm saying. 